magazine that was in his hand, opened it up and showed me the contents of the picture. And that picture scarred me for life. That picture, I can still remember that picture to this day. And it's never left me. Thank God, thank God that it's not at the forefront of my mind, but if I think about it, if you were to ask me the first time I was ever introduced to pornography, that the association is that picture from that event. Now, I didn't go looking for pornography. It was totally unexpected. I didn't ask for it and I, I wasn't searching for it. And what you have to remember was when I was about six or eight, six, some between six and seven, this was in a time when there was no internet. There was no smartphone. There was no pads or tablets. The closest thing to a computer that we had back then was a typewriter, a word processor, or a calculator, one of those three. And then if you consider the, the media environment that we had, there wasn't, you, for those of you that can remember growing up in the 80s, early 80s, late 70s, I would say there was just about four channels, four television channels. And there wasn't, in comparison to now, there was hardly any kids TV. And then video games wasn't a thing that was very common, hardly existed. And if you wanted to go and play video games, you had to play, pay to play. You had to go to the arcade, you had to go and spend some money. So for those of you that had no income and your parents weren't going to give you no money to play video games with, then there was a big barrier to, um, to that kind of entertainment. It was, it was hard to get into or to do if you had no, if there was no one providing you with resources to go and play. And especially where I grew up, we did, I grew up in a town where there was no arcades. So it, it didn't exist for us. And so we spent most of the time outside. But even then, there was still danger lurking around the corner. So fast forward, I don't know, almost 40 years. And today, our children are less than a click away from danger, less than a swipe of a phone screen or a tablet screen away from danger. So the game, the, the landscape has changed. The dangers haven't necessarily changed, but the landscape and the accessibility has changed dramatically. Think about it. I mean, if I stumbled upon um, pornography, I didn't look for it, it came to me. How much more so in this digital age is it easier or the risk even heightened if, um, for your children on the screen, on the tablet? Or even if you have control of your devices, the device of someone else, their friends, their acquaintances, their peers, their children at school or church or wherever it may be. And so as parents, we would never intentionally expose our children to danger. And if you look at um, this, the, the passage on the screen, Luke 11, 11 to 13, Jesus indicates that as parents, we would never intentionally in, introduce our children to danger. Our intentions, our best intentions is to give them what's good for them. But is the lack of our parental control exposing them to danger? and exposing them to a danger that could have a detrimental consequence on them and their future. So let me tell you a story about this guy called Danny. Now, Danny loved his father. He wanted to be just like his father, but Danny was smaller and not so athletic. And one, the, the, the family tradition was that every Christmas, the family would get together, his dad had another brother, the two brothers and their families would come together and this particular Christmas, Danny was about nine years old. And after their meal, their, the custom between the two brothers was that they would have a, have a social drink. They'd have a little drink after their um, Christmas lunch or the Christmas dinner. And this particular occasion, Danny's uncle asked his father if it was okay for him to give Danny a sip of what they were drinking. And his father said, okay. That's fine. Danny received his first sip of alcohol and became an instant alcoholic. So to make a long story short, Danny was able to feed his addiction without his parents knowing 
that he had a problem because his father didn't keep tabs or didn't keep a close eye on his alcohol. So his father had cans of alcohol, bottles of alcohol in the house. They weren't secure. And then he was able to help himself freely without his father realizing. So all this was going on from the time Danny was nine, right the way through, throughout his teens. Danny's going to school, primary school, let's imagine primary school, and he's going to school. He's having a drink in the morning before he goes to school because it makes him feel good, it makes him have a bit of confidence. And his parents are none the wiser. Fast forward to when he gets to secondary school, he's drinking much more heavily and his parents are none the wiser because they're not keeping tabs of their inventory, their alcoholic inventory. And it's not until Danny is about 15 years old that he was caught by the headmaster drinking with some other boys in front of his locker. At this point now, he's just brazen. He's just drinking as and when. But it's not until that incident that his parents actually found out that Danny was an alcoholic. And even then they had a hard time coming to terms with it. But even for Danny himself, even though his parents knew, he still didn't really address them. Nothing really happened. It wasn't until Danny was, until Danny had an incident where he almost lost his life and almost caused, caused his best friend to lose her life that he actually came to his senses. And that was a few years later. So as parents, the intention as parents is to avoid that kind of situation, right? We want to be aware of the fact that there is danger present, but we also want to prevent the incident from happening rather than having to treat the impact of the incident. So the question that we need to be asking ourselves as parents is this simple question. Am I effectively protecting my child or my children from danger? Because the last thing we want to do as parents in this digital age is by negligence, introduce our children to danger. So you can see from, if you reflect back on your upbringing, the, the playing field is completely different to now. The accessibility, the intuitiveness of these devices that we have today, it's, it, you don't, I don't know if anyone remembers, the last time they had to use a manual to operate their new phone. Anytime you buy or upgrade a new phone, they don't come with manuals. If you want to know how to do something and you can't figure it out, then you need to, you just Google it. So, and you've all, I'm sure everyone's noticed how easy it is for a child, a toddler, before he even speaks, writes, picks up a pen, that he knows how to swipe and operate the tablet or the screen or whatever. So, the, the playing field has completely changed. I mean, another incident from when I was growing up is dad bought a, dad, we had, we had television in our house. We had a black and white television. And from time to time to minimize the time that we spent on the television, dad would disconnect the wires from the television, either take out the fuse, disconnect, take off the plug, do something like that, something quite technical. And there was no television. But once we figured out how to rewire plug, how to check what was missing, look, when he wasn't about, we rewired the plug, put the fuse back in, plug in the TV, and we're off again watching te television. When he, we knew that he was coming home from work, we disconnect everything, unwire everything, take out the fuse. But we're living in a completely different time where we can't afford, we can't really afford to run those risks because the things that used to have only be accessible at certain hours of the night are now accessible 24 hours a day. And so the landscape is completely different. And so as parents, we need to be, we need to be ahead of, we need to be steps, leaps and bounds ahead of where our children are. So we, cannot, we can't afford to be tech shy or, we just got to embrace it and learn how to um, protect our children and not be negligent in this area because Satan is, as the Bible tells us, Satan is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he wants to devour our children. He wants to spoil them. He wants to damage them. And he wants them out of God's kingdom.
So without further ado, I will hand over to Brother Charles to do his presentation. All right, all right. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, you know, I absolutely enjoyed that uh, presentation because it brought me way back um, a little bit. And um, before I usually start any presentation, I like to explain a little bit about how I like to do things. You see, I am uh, someone who was taught a specific way of, my upbringing was very peculiar. I'm going to give you an example. When I was 16 years old, um, I'm not smiling about it, but at the time I didn't find it funny. My dad, my mom and dad, so it's my 16th birthday. They said, son, you know, you're old enough. You know, we think you're a man. So it's time for you to go to a party. Now, bear in mind, I had always heard about it at school, but my parents actually letting me go to a party at night. And to make matters worse, they gave me an extra incentive. They said, you're going by yourself. And I was thinking like, what have they had for, for dinner today? Because I was surprised. My parents are very strict parents. You know, like uh, everything has a meaning to it. So they took me, uh, they said, look, we're going to get you a cab and it's going to take you to this place. You're going to arrive at eight o'clock and that same cab, is going to come and get you at half past 10. I remember the exact time, half past 10. And I was like, I'm going to a party by myself. I, I've always felt like an adult, you know, so put my best clothes on. I was thinking, I'm old enough, you know. I've, I've seen other children being allowed to go out. That was my, my thought. So why can't I? And so I jumped into the cab and I arrived at this place. Um, I remember it was like a community center back home and I was a bit surprised because it was very quiet. And I was thinking, don't parties usually have music going on? I'd never been to a party before. So this was something new. So I was thinking, this should be music. I've heard this music. So I opened this door, went inside, and I saw these people sitting in a circle. And as they were sitting in a circle, they're like, Charles? I was like, yeah. And when I looked at the people, they looked a bit older than I would have thought. Some of them looked like they were in their 60s, some in their 30s. And next thing I hear someone saying, uh, I think the group is complete now. So it's like, complete, um, I'm waiting for something. Uh, they're like, no, 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 come sit, sit, sit. So I sat down and as I sat, they said, okay, uh, we're going to begin the AA meeting. Now for all those that are not aware, an AA is an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. Now bear in mind, I don't drink alcohol. And so the first thing I said was, excuse me, I think I'm lost here. I was meant to be going uh, with, and they're like, no, 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 don't, wait. Um, you, you're Charles, right? I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, we knew you were coming. I was like, yes, but uh, I don't think I'm in here. I I'm I belong here. And the first thing they said was, he's in denial. I was like, no, no, no. They're like, if you're not, listen to our stories. So these people began to tell us a story about why they were alcoholics. Some of them, like I've said, they grew up in the church and it just took having one sip because everyone else was doing it, what we now call peer pressure. And from that one sip, it gave them a confidence and excitement that we don't really talk about. And to the point where he needed an extra amount just to get to that same point until he had lost his job, he had lost his wife. That's when he realized he had a problem. And then as these people began to tell their stories, it wasn't that the Bible, when I read the Bible and he told, told me about alcohol, it wasn't at that moment that I realized that alcohol was wrong. It was the point where I was actually at that AA meeting that I realized that, you know what? These people's, this thing called alcohol can actually ruin your life. And so basically from that example, I realized that sometimes, especially with certain topics, we have to be hands-on with regards to our children. We shouldn't sugarcoat uh, things. We have to be very, very careful in terms of what the message we're trying to put across. Now, before I talk about uh, technology, because I'm going to go a bit more concrete into it, but I just want to give you a background because we can't just talk about uh, computers because we're also going to be talking about tablets. We're going so we're going to be talking about a lot of devices that all fall under the same uh, same branch and criteria. And so I just want us to look at uh, how we arrive at that. And for me to do that, 
we first of all have to talk about technology in general, because like I've said, if you think about the latest phone, it was a process over years to become what it is uh, today. And I have to give it context before we can go further and then you can understand what I'm trying to say. Now, I'm not gonna be, uh, I'm not gonna go around the bush. You cannot escape technology. Whether you're, we, we move to the country or we cannot escape technology. It's a part of our everyday life. Not in a scary sense, like being watched by, you know, by Big Brother from, I don't know those that read George Orwell's book, you know, we had to study it uh, at school, but in the sense that technology plays an essential role in your daily life. From the time you wake up to the moment uh, you hit the bed at night, you will live beneath the umbrella of technology. From the lights in your house, the smartphone in your pocket and the clothes on your back, you benefit from technology. Not only does technology play a significant role in your life, it also has a ubiquitous role in the presence of your church, your worship facility, the church management software you use, your church app. You know, a lot of people have got Bible apps these days and your ongoing uh, giving platform are all testaments to the benefits of technology you enjoy. Since technology is akin to the air we breathe basically, some people are hitting the proverbial pause button and asking, are there downsides to technology? Is the growing influence of social media, you know, like we're talking about information and technology, which is IT, bad for the church? Some people are thinking, what are the benefits if, for example, if I'm gonna be teaching my children of using technology, what I mean by technology, if you're gonna be using a phone, a computer, that is technology. Regardless if you consider yourself a futuristic, futuristic or envisioned life on the prairie, these are insightful questions you need to ask. To get the right answer to these questions, you have to study the Bible versus about the technology to get the lowdown from God. It's a, I don't know, it's a good idea to hear what others have to say about the topic. But for me, first and foremost, knowing what God has to say about it, technology is the anchor that will help you navigate the use of it in your life and in the life of your children, church, ETC. So to help you find your way, I'm gonna, we're gonna be talking about, first of all, what is technology? The limits of technology, examples of technology in the Bible, how the church uses te uh, technology, the source of technology, and then we're gonna go further, and then we're going to delve to the problem areas, because that's, I think, where the key aspect of what we want to learn and how can we keep our children safe? especially if you're going to be using it on a, on a daily uh, basis. So with that in mind, like I said, if you've got any questions, just type them out. And then hopefully at the end, maybe I can ask Sister Angela to come in and uh, read out the questions. Then we'll try and answer them if, if that can help. But like I said, so there will be a Q&A, but I need just to reiterate, it's important that I delve a little bit into technology for you all to get a better in, or insightful view of what it actually is. So. What is technology, right? When it comes to talking about technology in the Bible, there are firm opinions for or against it. Often when talking about technology, it's easy to talk about someone. Uh, oh, there's a bright, someone just said, there's a bright light over the head of Charles. Oh gosh, uh, I apologize where I am, I can see it. I will see if I can just sort it in a second. Unfortunately, like I've said, I've had to work in my work area because my, uh, my daughter's in the house and she's just running about everywhere. So uh, bear with me, I can see it. Let me see if I can, uh... okay, if it really bothers you, let me know that I'll see if I can stop and, 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 and fix it, if that's okay. Um, right, so what I was saying, what is technology, right? Uh, often when talking about technology, it's easy to talk about, to talk past someone because you're not actually talking about the same thing since there are so many nuances to the conversation. So to make sure we are starting off on an equal footing, let me first start off by defining technology, right? So this is according to the Merriam-Webster dictionary. Technology is the invention of useful things to solve problems. So to this definition, I'd also add that technology can include the creation of things that make life easier. I know there's a broad definition of technology and it can include encompass many facets like communication technology, social media, computer software, and aerodynamics to flesh these out. Let's explore just a few examples, okay? So just bear with me. Uh, first, think about the words you're reading 
or what I'm saying right now, where, what platform are we using? We're using Zoom, right? Let's look at basics. Did you know that the alphabet is considered a form of communication technology? Think about it. There was a time when the English alphabet didn't exist. If English is your native language, speaking and reading it may feel as natural as the air you breathe, but it wasn't until I think it's the fifth century when the roots of written English of the English language began to take shape, right? So uh, let's put it this way. Like every other written language, the English language was created to solve the problem of communication between a specific group of people, right? To save us both time and our sanity, I'm not even going to attempt to convey the many technological advances that needed to care over hundreds of years to afford me the opportunity to speak like I am to you on Zoom. Um, as for the additional examples, I can go on, but I think you're getting my point. Technology has evolved, but it's always existed in one form or another, right? Technology is simply the application of knowledge to create useful things to solve problems or make life easier. So for better or worse, this means it's nearly impossible for you to avoid the influence of technology. But don't worry, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. In fact, you can, uh, you can read about many examples of technology in the Bible. I'm going to give you a few examples. Um, for starters, God chose to communicate with us in such a way that we could understand what he was saying. He didn't pursue us with a mystical form of communication that required a decoder to understand. Um, God chose to reveal himself to us through the languages we developed, in particular, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek, which are the three languages used to write uh, the Bible. Not only is this the case, but from Genesis to Revelation, we observe many uses of technology in the old, new, the old and the New Testament. Here's just an example of few. Cain built a city. I think that's in Genesis 4:17, um, right? I think uh, Genesis 4:22. Chubal Cain wait, made things out of bronze and iron. Uh, I think it's Genesis 4. 22. Noah built an ark, uh, Genesis 6. Uh, people built the Tower of Babel, if you remember the story, uh, that's still in Genesis. King Solomon built a temple. Jesus used tools as a carpenter. Paul used letters to write. So God isn't a hardliner when it comes to using technology to further his purposes. In other words, he's enti is entirely for or against technology. But this doesn't mean that God is okay with however we use technology. He calls us to use technology for his glory and our good. Uh, that's 1 Corinthians 10, uh, verse 31. Not for the destruction of his creation or people, right? So um, with those examples out of, out of the way, how are we using technology within our church? People use Bible apps. I don't know if I could have a show of hands. How many people have got Bible apps on their phones? Okay, I'm seeing quite a few people putting up their hands. So quite a lot of us, some of us have got uh, the hymnal as well. I can see people uh, putting up their hands. So we use, some of us even, I, I, like for me, on my phone, I've got uh, Mrs. White's writings uh, on, my, on my phone. And when I have time, I just sit down. You, you, you've got enough time to sit and think and realize that technology is in everything that we do. And it's, now it depends on how we use it because I think this is where we are going to delve a bit more into it and it's very very important that we delve into that aspect because it becomes a bit of a, a problem if we only paint technology in one light without actually looking at the relevant aspects that uh, it's, it's, it's coming to. Because not only does technology fall in phones, like I've said, uh, transportation, cars, buses, uh, then we talk about computer software, medical technology, medical advances. I heard you can make an artificial heart even. So there are good aspects of it. And then we're also going to look at what really we want to discuss, which is how it affects us in the form of technology in the gadgets we use like phones, tablets, and computers. Right. Without going into further ado, I want to now ask all the parents, if they can, how many have access to computers? Because remember, we, we're looking at technology as a tool. It's something that we can use to help us in a certain way. How many of us have access to a computer? How many of us have access to a phone? 
how many have access to tablets? So if you really think about it, all of us have access to that. And then you, when you go further and you ask yourself, how many of our children have access to those same things? Now we're talking about phones, tablets, and uh, etc. So how many of us can, 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 can answer that question? And you're going to notice it's the same. Now, what you need to understand, like I said, with progression of technology, computers, I think from 1977, that's when they began to come into the home. And I remember the first computer my mom uh, had was a little computer, I think a Windows 95. Uh, it took about two or three minutes to load or to come on and you couldn't do much on it, but it was a computer. And so nowadays you have computers that switch on in seconds. And with speed and time, you're going to realize that as parents, we are sort of like still stuck in the older pattern in the sense that how we grew up defines where we are in terms of technology. Like somebody mentioned they had four channels um, uh, when they were growing up. I'm jealous because from those that are from my country, some of us had one. And then as we grew up, we had two. And out of those two, I think kids' channel time, kids' time was only between three and four, and that was it. So we never grew up with the luxury of, 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 of television. And computers, like I've said, my passion for computers came from the fact that um, I had family that were already in the industry. And I sort of like just gleaned information along, which made me realize I had a passion for it. But with regards, re regards to that, you're going to notice that what you have what you have learned now most of your kids without realizing it already know either half as much as you have learned your entire life lifetime or they already uh, know more than you i've seen some smiles now what you don't realize is that children are very you know like when i when i was growing up i could pick up languages like this i speak uh four languages but I realized as I was growing up, it, I didn't even know I, it, that it was amazing to know so many languages. I only realized it when I grew up, when people were, were now trying to learn some of the languages, like it's not that easy. So when you're younger, it's a lot easier for you to pick up information and you don't realize it, but our kids have got the potential of doing a lot more simply because they have learned it at an earlier age. Have you understood? I understand what I'm saying. And because they do, sometimes you don't realize it, but our kids already know more about how to use the gadgets that we have now simply because they started off at an earlier age. I'm going to give you an example. I've got a keyboard in front of me. Now, my keyboard right now has got certain shortcuts. And I know my son is listening because he's on this forum. My son already knows three quarters of the shortcuts that I need to use on here in memory. So for example, I know if you press control X, you can cut, control C means uh, you can copy, control V means you can paste. There are a lot, control Alt shift, there is, there is a lot of functions on here that my son is teaching me and I'm supposed to be the computer expert. Are you, are you understand what I'm saying? So he is, 11. One of the things that I realize as parents, we don't understand. The internet is like a jungle, literally like a jungle. It's a jungle in the sense that if you were smaller, would your parents let you go out at night? Of course, I don't know. Some people probably grew up in the city. Some of us grew up like uh, somewhere where you, you can call it jungle, isn't it? So what I'm trying to say is that by the time you realize that the internet is a scary place, you need to be hands-on as a parent to understand the dangers before you let your child get onto any device. Simply because like I've said, even if you look at tools, uh, I'm sure even if we look at 200 years ago, the people that were making the first tools, you had to be very careful how you used. When I say two, I'm, I'm talking about maybe the person that made the drill, the first drill, or 
uh, as they as they developed, someone was there to hold their hand. But in this case, what we are doing is we've created a virtual jungle, which we're calling the internet, and we're letting our children go unattended because we think that they are safe in the confines of our home. So if you think about it, their mind is in the jungle. Their body physically is here, but they're not really there. Why I'm uh, giving this example is because some of the things that our kids are learning, this is very important. Some of the things that the kids are learning. It reminds me of the story of, um, of Lot. Now, uh, I, I want you guys to, to think on this. Lot, you know, like when he separated from his uncle, do you remember he, he was like, how far, what, did he go straight into the city of Sodom? Does anyone remember where was he at the beginning? He was on the outskirts. He was I want to hear a, a shout out. If anyone, where was he? If you know the answer, just just shout out. Where was he at the beginning? The outskirts. The outskirts of the city on the hill. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't hear. Oh my! I think I know what's happened. Just bear with me one second. Um, this is another thing. Uh, right. My my microphone is just no. My speakers. We're disconnected. My, my daughter ran away with the remote. Like oh. I've said, I love my daughter. So I'm just going to try and see which one of these work. So you can hear me, but I can't hear you. So bear with me. Um, Uh, okay, so two things I want to bring up, uh, which are very important. If you think about the story of Lot, when the angels came to get him, where was he? Remember at the beginning, he was outside the city. But by the time they came to get him, where was he? In the city. Now, I don't know whether I, I should, how I can if I should say it, but I think it's very important, I, I do anyway. And uh, I'll see if I can try and be politically, uh, no, don't worry, one second, and be uh, politically correct. But the internet has got an issue of being able to desensitize us. What I mean by desensitize us is, if you think about it, a lot of the time, the things that we see like violence, like murder, like the sexualizing of videos of children, all of that, our children have access to it. Whether we want to, uh, uh, to agree to that or not, we have to realize that our children have access to it. And because they do have access to it, there's a problem. What can, how can we help ourselves? How can we help ourselves and be able to come to a place where we realize that we cannot leave our children without a filter, without anything to stop them from being able to access content which is not readily available? Sorry, um, just one second. I, trying to load a, a video. Um, Hello? Hi. Um, right. For the sake of time, because the video is quite long and I really want to get to the question and answers. Okay. The video is talking about what happened four years ago. Four years ago, a young boy, he had an argument with a friend and he used to play a game called Fortnite. And this boy used to have a habit. So in this game, you get a bat and you hit people over the head with them. You can get a gun, you can shoot people, it's just a game. So he got frustrated so that in this game, you could get a bat, put barbed wire on it and hit people with it. So this boy got frustrated with his friend because he had lost the game. 
So he went to his house and he hit him with the bat. And when the police came to his house and uh, they surrounded him, they saw him doing a dance. Now the dance is called, uh, I think the floss dance, which is done on Fortnite. So the game, when you kill someone, you can do that same dance. And after he had committed that atrocity, he was just standing there, smiling and saying, look, I, I got him back. And so the police that were there were shocked. How can a child do that? But he had become so desensitized to the violence. Sometimes we, we, we don't understand the consequences of, uh, of the, the games that the children play, of the things that they do. But honestly speaking, it's become so bad. It's gotten to a point where you won't realize it. But every moment that you expose your child to certain, without looking at what they're doing, if you are not aware of how much time your child is spending on the internet. If you're not aware of how much child, time your child spends on gadgets, on technology, you have a problem. Why do you have a problem? Because like I've said, anything that is not, you know, so sometimes we talk about temperance, we talk about control. If you do not have control over what your child is doing, especially if it's something that you are not, you don't have a clue towards, then there is a problem. Why is there a problem? We got a very, very, uh, sorry, We've got a very, very, uh, some, somebody mentioned that when they, was, uh, when they were young, they were exposed to, to something, to, to pornography. And look at the, the consequences that were brought from it. And it's the same thing. If we are not aware of what our children are doing right, before, right this minute, then you've got a problem. You've got a problem because at the end of the day, we, are, we have got a responsibility towards our children. We've got something called accountability. We are going to have to answer for what we did with our children. We are not accountable for anybody else, but you're going to be asked, what where are your children? What happened to them? And so what this is telling me is that we have to take the sacredness of what how we look after our children very seriously. There are a few things that happen over the internet. We're talking about things like cyberbullying. Now, when I was growing up, I encountered bullies. I encountered people that were generally, generally um, not very good, but we, we, we had structures in place to help us tackle bullying. We, you have to understand that the worst bullying you can come across is the one where you're not, as a parent, you don't even know your child is being bullied. You know, we talk about peer pressure. I'll be honest, three quarters of the stuff that we did that we got ourselves in trouble, even if you think of it, parents, you know what peer pressure can do. But if you don't know who your child is chatting to, uh, quite recently, again, I think this is in the past month, uh, somebody has been convicted uh, as, uh, for having pretended that he was a child. Again, this game called Fortnite, he disguised himself as a child. You know, he, he superimposed this picture to look younger. And when he looked younger, do you know what he did? He went and challenged young people that he was playing. Like, look, I'll pay for you to play longer. He told them ways to bypass the security features enabled by their parents to the point where he was not asking the children to take pictures of themselves dressed inappropriately. If this man had not been caught, because how he was caught was because one of the children refused uh, to take off their, the, their clothes. And in the end, uh, he had because he had borrowed the child money over the internet without the parents knowing. So he asked for his money back. And when he asked for his money back, the child had no choice but to tell the parent. So this tells you that there are some people out there who can take advantage of your lack of vigilance. They can take advantage of your lack of, ah. of what? Of knowledge of what your children does, where they are, how they spend their time. And so why this is important, parents, is because there are parameters in place that you can put. There are ways in which you can check, look and look after your children to ensure that they are safe. What, if you don't do that, you are actually allowing the, 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 the same people, because remember technology, we can't run away from technology. It's got benefits and it's got, like I've said, the benefits, if we look at it, far outweigh the negatives. But to be honest, the negatives can have life-changing consequences. Why I'm saying life-changing consequences is because our children can be groomed over the internet, over social media, over Google. Um, I'm talking about Google, you're wondering. On Google, there's something called Google Duo. Um, 
sorry, just just bring me, Sister Angela, your hand is raised. Let me see if I can put the speaker on again. Can you switch it on? Uh, it's, it's yeah, it's on. on. All right, go on. Your mic is off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A sister, um, sister, um, uh, oh sorry, Doctor uh, Romeo, um, no. was asking what is cyberbullying. I don't know if that question's been answered, but I thought it might be helpful before we keep going on if if they're not there, Doctor Ramon R Romeo. Oh, you want to know what cyberbullying is? Yes. Right. Um, this. Uh, did you say something? Uh, what I actually like to do is in a forum like this, before I answer, parents, what do you understand by cyberbullying? I, I would like to see some hands up, please. If we can just have, I'll have two people give me an answer. What do you understand by cyberbullying? Anyone? You can turn on I your mic. Have, I don't have a hand to, to lift. Uh, I know right. the icon, but um, what I understand is um, anyone can abuse you or call you names even if they let's say they're john smith but actually they are sharon walker or something they can create a fake account just to to bully people just like physical bullying but verbally uh, sometimes they're referred to as keyboard warriors because they can just type whatever they think about uh... oh without consequence um that wasn't me by the way <laughs> without consequence and um it might hurt someone and words are, you know, hurtful as we all know. Okay, well, I'll have one more person. Uh, if you can, anyone else? Will the mole yeah, have? The mole hello. <coughs> hello. He's pulling sometimes, on the internet. Sometimes when people, put, uh, young people post their picture, they can comment on their picture negatively. And that's some of them, some people have actually gone to commit Taking, taking their lives because they did comment negatively about them. And if they have inferiority complex, mm -hmm. that's it. And their disability as well. People who are disabled, you know, have a, a disability has been, you know, uh, something done, done wrong to them because people commented on their, that uh, okay. over the internet. All right, thank you. Right, um, cyberbullying, right, is bullying that takes place over digital ser services. So it can be like cell phones, computers, tablets, even SMS messages, texts, apps. So anything on digital media, like for example, um, there could be someone telling you, telling your child, you look ugly. Or worst cases, some of you said, why don't you kill yourself? You look, and they've, so, so any, any, any form of abusive behavior that is done through that, that, those forms of media, that is what that is the term that defines cyberbullying. As, as any, everyone understood the difference. So it's bullying that takes place over digital devices. That's basically what it is. Okay. Right, okay. Uh, so um, where were we? We're talking about, um, when you become desensitized to violence. When a child watches violent movies, when it's somebody watches um, certain things that, for example, uh, there, there was a, a text I was, I can't remember, uh, um, I'm saying a text. I read somewhere, I'm trying to think where it was, where it stated that, you know, when a child is young, if you play rock music, loud music, at first, their heartbeat increases, their, like, you know, it's the fetus. But they become, by the time they're born, they're, they've become desensitized. So you can play as loud music as you want, but it will not affect them because they become desensitized to it. It's the same thing with when you let your child play a game that's rated 18 and they think that killing, it's not a coincidence, you know, that in America, you're getting people going on rampages. Have you noticed? America has got a lot of people that have just suddenly picked up a gun and they all fall under certain criteria and category. If you've noticed, they pick up a gun and then they mass, mass killing people. If you notice in games, it's you get points for that. The more people you kill, the more points you get. I do not think that there is, it's, it's a, it's, there is a definite link with regards to how people are being killed. If you remember, there was a, a 
a, 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 a man that went and killed, I can't remember, in New Zealand. He had a mass killing, he killed so many uh, Muslims. And this was an avid gamer. He loved playing games. So for him, this is the exact same thing he's doing with his gun in killing people in real life. It's what he's used to. So if we, we get our children used to certain things, Sorry, uh, we got uh, a hand raised again. Go on, um, Mohale Mohel, Mohale. Okay, okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh yes, all right. Um, I I, I have learned about uh, how bad the games are, hmm. and at the moment uh, we are for our TV channels at home. We only watch Hope TV. Um, and uh, I have been wondering because they are advertising uh, some games like I can't remember, but it's it's a Bible game. You install it and you play it. And I was telling my kids that no, no, that is a bad game, even if it's biblical, because it will drive you to this secular game. So. That is not a game to play. So um, I, I was just worried as to how can we uh, be so uh, trying to make biblical games, which will lead us to secular games. <laughs> okay, uh, this is actually, I had a topic about this um, at my church. I presented, uh, I think one was one of the AY programs at Walsall Church. Um, I'm going to tell you something. When it comes to technology, whether it's Bible app, if you've got a Bible app, I'm going to tell you now, please use it, but have your Bible handy. Because what you need to understand is the word free nowadays. I'm putting, as you can see, I'm putting these on there. It doesn't exist so much. Sometimes when something comes for free, it comes with a price. You need to see what exactly is it installing when it comes with. So, for example, uh, I have had most of my business because my where I work is I I provide IT support to to various companies. That's basically what I do. If a company is setting up, um, they will give me the specs of where they want their computers. I go and I put them. Now I'm going to tell you now. This is what I sit that I actually had envisioned I would be doing but the majority of the business that I've realized I'm getting now is because a lot of parents are coming to me with their computers laptops or desktops I've had somebody even post me the monitor because they didn't realize that the monitor is not actually the computer just so that I could have a look at it because what you need to realize especially with games what does it income installed with just like in all aspects we need whatever our children are doing we have to be on top of it because remember what i said this is a jungle you don't know where your child is going even the innocent games the a b c d games if you've noticed nowadays by law game when you open a new website they ask you to read terms and condition how often do you take time to read the terms of condition i've had somebody that's actually signed away the permission for a new app that they had put, but they didn't realize that this app was actually malicious and it actually allowed them, it, it was giving permission for when they logged onto their bank on that same laptop, they were also providing details to that company of their login details. So by the time they realized that some of their money was going to, and not a lot of money was being withdrawn, the thieves were just taking 15 pounds, 20 pounds, but over a year, I want you to imagine how much money they lost. And simply because, like I've said, when you allow a child to use the same device you're using and you don't realize the what it's what when it's installing itself, what else does it come with? Does that make any sense? You need to actually maybe even do a Google search. If you're putting the Bible app like you have said and you think it's a bad for, for whatever reason, please find out first of all which company installs the Bible app. Um, again, this is just for factual reason. There was a time where I realized that the Bible app that was being made was made by the same company that was being making a, a satanic, what is it again? Um, I can't remember. They were making a, a satanic game as well. Um, and it's just the same thing. I'm not sure if you guys li listen to your, 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 your news. There's this man called uh, Little Nas X. Like I said, he started off playing um, 
his the music he was playing was targeted at young people and they used it for background you know like when you're playing a game this song is playing in the back of your mind and what people don't realize is as the game is playing and that music is playing it's already changing your mindset and so by the time the kids heard this game on the video they didn't really mind it because their pro minds had already been programmed to ignore it the song was called call me by your call me by my name i'm not sure if you're all aware of it uh, this man has released this company uh, a few months ago. They released a shoe called the Jesus shoe, right? And it sold out. And now they've released the counter shoe. It's called the devil shoe. And now the devil shoe, it's got everything. It's got human blood in it. Uh, it's got, um, I think, it, 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 they made 666 pairs, apparently. And the shoe was going for over a thousand uh, pounds. And not just that. Uh, it had the devil's insignia and in there it was giving a verse that was saying that the devil look is just a misunderstood person he was just doing right by him and god is the one that is actually uh uh who wronged the devil so you would think people would, would be like what is going on here but the song had already been released so by the time he released the shoe called the devil shoe apparently all the shoes were sold out in one minute i hear me people one minute so we're talking about technology. So in other words, people clicked buy, buy, and all the pairs that they made of this shoe, uh, of these 666 shoes, uh, saying that the devil is not justified, had been sold out. My brothers and sisters, we, you need to be careful. What I'm trying to tell you right now is that one of the weaknesses we have is because of time, because of our fields of... Uh, our children are not safe on, the, on their computers. You may not realize it, just for them to do their homework. I had a conference, which I think I will need to do uh, soon, where I'm going to show you how you can keep your children. It's simple, it's free. Nowadays, most of the companies have got something called parental controls. Parental controls on the computers ensure that, look, you put the child, when the child signs in, you put in their age, whether it's a phone, you put in their age and you also put what content you want them to access. So if you don't want them to be on social media, you can cancel it. If you only want them to be on the computer for three hours, because one of the most important things when it comes to information and technology is that children have to have a regulated time on the internet in, in, order, sorry, in order for them to be able to use it safely. This is actually research done. If you give your children un, um, unrestricted access, they do not get the benefit of it. Let them learn how to do research. One of the things I realized about um, homeschooling, uh, which is like I said, a blessing for me. My son, when I have a computer here, he's always watching me sitting, what are you doing? And something that I used, takes me five minutes to look at the instructions to learn, I've realized as he just needs to see me do it. He doesn't need to read the instructions and he now knows how to do it properly. He can pick up now a computer and disassemble it in a way that I, I can never do. And I've realized when it comes to technology, give your children parameters, how they can safely, sec don't sugarcoat the dangers of the internet. Sometimes show them what, that there are pedophiles on the, on the internet that are looking to groom young people. Because like I've said, in the news, it's coming out quite a lot of young people that are groomed by someone they met on Facebook on different social media platforms. And these people start by hook, reeling in the, the, the children by finding a common area of interest. Now, if you don't know who your children are talking to, who their friends are, how can you be sure that they're talking to who they think they're talking to? Because in all honesty, they may think they're talking to another 10 year old, another 13 year old, whilst in honesty, they may be talking to a predator. So this is why I have to reiterate that we cannot, ignore this i want to take a time to show you guys how to use parental controls and uh that's what i'm going to share but i before i do that i just wanted to give you just a, a clear view of where i'm going with this the internet or any form of technology becomes dangerous when it's unregulated and as parents you have to make sure that you regulate what your child has access to not only for their sake, but for your sake, because like I've said, I, I have, 
I wish I could uh, take time to actually show what I have. I've got lots of computers that have been brought to me because a child downloaded an app which was free and he didn't realize that that app had Adway. And even though the app even warned him, um, when you sign this, you are giving us permission to access your background activities. Do you accept? A child just wants to play the game. So he clicks accept, accept, accept. And next thing, this parent is wondering how come inappropriate stuff is being broadcast on their on their page when they're doing a Google search? Or why has their Google browser been hijacked? Mm -hmm. So a lot of those things I'm hoping with the time that we have, I'm going to just try and show you how you can make sure one, your computer is safe. And two, you don't have any third party people that are looking to see what you're doing on your computer. Like I've said, this, if we had to look at each and every device, like I've said, this would take very long. But what I'm just trying to do is to set a platform for you all to understand just how precarious um, the, the World Wide Web is. And if anything, understand the risk in how it can affect you. Nowadays, some people, when they hijack your computer, they don't just take your bank details. What they will do is they will steal your identity. So you don't even think, look, your bank details, your bank records are in order. 10 years down the line, you're checking and on county records, it's saying that the bailiffs were looking for you because you, you missed the payment in, in some remote village in Scotland that you bought. People may not realize this, but that, that is where we are at the moment. And so this is why I want to reiterate that with as much time as we have, let's try and uh, keep a stern focus on where what our children are doing. And not just that, as parents as well, I also want to advise you, uh, I hope we can have time, check to see if your computer is safe. There's three things that I'm going to uh, try and uh, get you to do. First of all, like I've said, uh, do you have some form of antivirus on your phone? or on your, on your, on your computer. Uh, and for example, if you're using multiple platforms, are they linked in any way? Are they, can, for example, if you access it on one device, do you get a notification when you're on another device? How exactly do you ensure that there is no third party that can inv get involved? Is your browser safe? You know, sometimes when you go on Google and you type um, nearest SDA church, uh, towards me. And then the first three results are single websites or dating websites. Then you know your browser has been hijacked because like I've said, your search results should always address what you're looking for. If you notice that quite regularly, your browser is telling you certain things or your computer is telling you that it's found 500 viruses and you're thinking, where have they come from? That could be adware. So there's different ways in which people are using now to be able to get access to your computer and then see your whereabouts. Some people have ended up even putting tape to cover so that no one can see them, their webcam because they're afraid. So people are aware that someone can hack into their computer and get their, web, their webcam. But if they can, that means they can also get the audio so they can hear what you're saying. So all of these things I will be, I'm hoping with the time we have, we'll be able to address them and at least come to a consensus on how we can safely use the internet and exact and for example and block websites that are inappropriate so that our ch children don't get exposed to inappropriate content at the wrong time um this is something very uh very important uh, i've just seen a question adware yes <laughs> i'll explain to you sister angela what adware is um when, when we get a chance but like i've said i want us to be able to do that so if you've got time um do you all have access to to the device that you want us to talk about? Because I'm going to ask how many people have got Apple, Macs, uh, I think there's Chrome, and then there's also Windows. I know there's different platforms. So let's see if we can address them and then see where we come up uh, with regards to that. Is that okay? If you've got questions, please uh, type them on the side so that I can answer them as well. Right. Okay. Do you want people to type in the chat which ones they have so we can have an idea? Okay. Yeah, while we're doing that, so I'm just uh, trying to get ready the, to share screen. So just bear with me. Uh, 
Okay. So uh, by, I'm not sure how I can do this, but by a show of hands, how many people um, have got Windows 7? How many people got Windows XP? Okay, I've got one hand raised, Windows 7. Uh, how many people have Windows? Okay, Windows 7. So two people with Windows 7. Right. Um, before we even go there, why do you have Windows 7? Could I have an answer? Oh, Windows Vista. Um, at least... No, I don't, sorry. I don't want any Windows 10. Right now, Windows Vista, Windows 7. Windows 10. Actually, we have Windows 10. Okay. Windows Vista. Now, I'm going to be honest. If you've got Windows Vista right now, you shouldn't have it. Mm. If you've got Windows 7 right now, you shouldn't have it. I'm going to explain to you why. Someone says, when upgrading, I might lose files. Incorrect. The unfortunate, <laughs> that's uh, Mohali as well. No, you you might, but the answer is that's not right. Um, why can't you, can anyone tell me why you can't, why you shouldn't be using Windows Vista and Windows 7? Anybody? Mm -hmm. uh, Kiani, your hand is raised. This is my son, by the way. So I'm curious to see why, what he says. Um, the reason why is because it's not the, the update for Windows 10 um, are better because with Windows Vista, Windows are no longer having security updates or, and so it's better for Windows 10 because it can alert you when when there's something going on than with Windows 7 or Windows Vista. Whoever your dad is, I'm sure he's very proud, Kiani. Um, that is correct. I have not told him that. Um, he knows, yes. What Kiani is saying is absolutely right. Um, you shouldn't have Windows 7 because it's outdated. They don't provide any up, updates for it. So in other words, if there's a hacker, most hackers now are having fun with Windows 7 because they know Microsoft won't protect you. And so what's happening is that they, if there is an update or a breach in the Windows 7 mainframe security, you do not have any safe options. If someone hacks into your computer, they've hacked into your computer. There's no, you can't get out of it. So this is very important for those that have outdated browsers and outdated operating systems. There is no longer any support. And because there's no, more, no longer any support, it means that we are reaching a point where it's not safe. I, I don't know if I'm, what I'm making, what I'm saying is, is, is okay. It's not safe. And because it's not safe, um, before that, I apologize. My, my son had asked me, because you wanted to, specifically to talk about, um, you wanted to talk about something that's very important for the young people in terms of games. Keone, do you still have the presentation on games? This is very important, sorry. I'm just getting the, the presentation on regard to how you can keep your computer safe. Keone, can you do your presentation, please? Sorry, I'm just going to help him. Um, Sanjay, is anyone can just give him uh, permission just to, um, to, so that he can be in charge of the, so that he can do his presentation? Just be with me. I'm just going to be, uh, sit with him. Yeah, that's fine. Screen share. Thank you. Um, let's make sure screen. I'm sorry, one second. Uh. Okay, so today, oh, 
what we're going to be talking about is the effects of games. Uh, well, first, we're going to be talking about viruses on your computer. A little louder, Kiani. Oh, sorry. So first, we're going to be talking about. So first, we're going to be talking about viruses on your computer. On your computer. So, um, how downloading can affect your computer. Now, games bring in viruses. A lot of games that say free may not actually be free. Installing games like Fortnite, Call of Duty, Among Us, Roblox, Minecraft, Mario Kart, Rocket League, FIFA, WWE, 2K20, and many more have a price tag, but sometimes they're only free because they have a virus that tags along with the game. Usually it will show and it will show and this and Windows will make sure that you want to install it when it is installed. It. And when you say no, it needs administrative permission or it won't install. It's true. It needs you to accept that set then the virus will be hard to remove if you accept it. So as you can see here, um, it says Fortnite installer. So it has sometimes has a virus. Now, let me let me play it. It's a virus, and also has this is the same. It's the same thing as Fortnite. This article. This is an article I found off the internet. Um. Attention to all remnant users. My virus total detected this from more than from the installer of the critical ops page. So this is how many viruses you have. Which is a lot. It's a lot of viruses. So this next one, Steam Gateways. Steam has a lot of fun games like NBA 2, K21, and Minecraft, which is a gateway. Most of you don't know what a gateway is on a laptop. A gateway is like in real life, it opens and shuts. On a computer, it lets things in and out. Sometimes it could be viruses. This is what I also found in the internet. Um. So, Kiani. Yeah? Yeah, I just, if you're looking at the page, now parents, most of you don't even know what this stuff is. But if you remember, look, it, when it says remotely take over a third party game server, in other words, it can take your computer through arbitrary code, right? It can remotely crash your computer. In other words, all these things can make your computer slower. It, you know, sometimes you wonder, have you ever wondered why your computer is getting, uh, is, it gets slower and slower? Sometimes it could be because of malware or your computer is getting very warm or hot. There are a lot of factors that you need to consider. Like if you hold your computer and you've started to wonder why is it acting a specific way? All of this, could you need to check what exactly is on your computer. And if we have time today, I'm hoping we can go through that again for you to see how do you check what's on your computer? How can you tell what's installed on your computer for, for, for you to understand just how dangerous these programs are? So Kiani, sorry, please carry on uh, with, your, with your presentation. Thank Robert you. Charles. Yes. Just to let you know, we, we finish at 8.30. Okay. Then so we can move on to the parental control and what we can actually do. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Kiani, thank you very much uh, for, for that. So I'm going to share screen. Uh, thank you very much, Kiani. Um, I, was, I wasn't done. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, Okay. Okay, so parents, if you're on your computer, uh, let's have a look at two things. You're looking at my screen right now um, and you're gonna see my basic uh, setup, right? 
Now I don't like to have lots of clutter on my uh, on my on my uh, on my screen. I need love to see what the programs are. Now what we're going to first of all understand how many people at the moment have because now I know there's Windows people with Windows Vista, Windows Seven, Windows Vista. So they most likely can do the same thing. Windows Seven, Windows Ten. Is there anyone with Mac or and Google Chrome? If they are, could I have a show of hands, please? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what? What? Um, in 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 the Bible in right now. Sorry. Okay, so I'm just going to start with um with Windows, and then we'll see. Because Mac is pretty much straightforward as well. If you just go to uh, the, the on the top and you look at about my Mac, and then you're going. If you look at applications, it will show you exactly what's on your computer. Windows is a bit more uh, complicated, but I was trying to. So there's a folder on all your computers called Add or Remove Programs. So I'm just going. If I type Add, you're going to see where it says Add or Remove Programs. Now this is on Windows 10, but on Windows 7, Vista, same thing add and remove is should be there. And so this will tell you everything that's installed on your computer. Have you understood? So if you see anything that you're not sure of, I'm going to re reiterate anything that has to do with, for example, um, pay, or it's got something that has to do with cash on it. Have a look at it. For example, let's say I see something called sticky notes. If I'm not sure what it is, you can just uh, click on it and then look at which company makes it. So if you look here, I know that this is from Microsoft Corporation. So if I know it's from Microsoft Corporation, I know this is most likely a safe program. Now, there are other ways in which you can check. You can also do a Google search. So let's say, for example, uh, I'm trying to see a program that doesn't have, uh, let's say, Scan Manager. Now, Scan Manager does not have a manufacturer. So you can go copy this to find out which company makes Scan Manager. Why this is important is because you need to know everything that's installed on your computer. Because if you don't know, there could be a third party program that has hijacked your computer already. Uh, have we understood so far what I'm trying to say? It's very important you, you keep a, a close tab of what it is. If you realize you've got more than five programs that you're not aware of, like I've said, make sure you write those down and then you can do a Google search on, on them. And then we can see uh, then you can see what exactly, uh, which company makes them. If, uh, for example, I'm going to just give you one of the most common ones that I get, which is called, um, it's called Search It, I think. search so if you look at here search.exe if you've got it on your computer can you see what it is already so this basically tells you what you should do if you have that on your computer it should already be uninstalled it's the same thing with regards to parental controls now why i'm specifically trying to show you that you need to know what exactly you have on your computer Half of the parents have never done this. They have got no idea what they have. And because they've got no idea, how do they keep their computer safe? Same thing with regards to how, how do we check to make sure our computer is safe? If you've, got, um, if you've got Windows 10 and Apple, like I've said, Apple as well, just a simple uh, search on, 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 your, on your browser, just type parental controls. Just say, uh, so say Windows, parental controls, right? So parental controls should be on every PC. So should be on every, sorry, on every single PC, parental controls. So on here, it comes under family options. Can you see? So on family options, as soon as you click family options, it should tell you which people have got, can use the computer and what they are and what, if for you to set their ages. So for example, if you look here under family options, can everyone see family options? Here's what it tells you. Help protect your kids online. Choose which websites your kids can visit 
as they explore the web, set good screen time habits. This is very important. Please do not let your children have 24 hour access to the computer because also then we'll be talking about things like addiction. We do not want to be talking about addiction as well. So that is another area we have to be careful. Let's keep track of uh, the children's digital life. Every single thing that a child does, you should be able to get it in a list in browser history that is available. And this is on all the devices that they use. This is one way in which we can keep our children safe. If you tend to notice that your child, like for example, um, I have noticed that my child loves technology, but we don't want him to be there too long. So some of the things that we've implemented, we've given him an old camera. And with that old camera, if I could tell you what he has learned to do with it, the pictures he's now taking, we're actually thinking of getting him another camera, a better one, simply because the pictures he has taught, he's learned, he's learned how to take. He loves to take nature pictures. By the, he's only 11. So we can actually use that, that talent that they have in this field to be something that they can make use in their later profession. But we have to be very careful how we do that, if, 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 if you get what I'm saying. So once you get here, like I've said, you click where it says uh, view family settings. It's straightforward. Then you can set up an account for how your children can, can, can work. But because of time, I can only show you what it does. Right. And if, if you want to get in touch with me, like I said, by all means, feel free to do that. So I, I don't know. Sorry. Is that a question? Are there any questions so far? Because we're running out of time. There was a question from earlier, um, and it was in connection with this. Somebody was saying, what would you recommend as a safe browser? I don't know if you just answered that. What would you recommend as a safe browser? I'll be honest with you. All browsers are safe. It's just, please be careful what I was telling you about. Remember that what I told you about, that search.exe. A lot of parents' browsers are already hacked. So as we're speaking right now, if we had time to look at all your browsers, I'm going to ask you if you've got time, just quickly do a Google search. Type on your any browser that you have or that you use. Type, uh, so let's all have a look at this. So I'm gonna go and uh, I, I'll, I'll type, because I'm from Warsaw, so I'm gonna type, oh gosh. I'm gonna type uh, Warsaw, I'm gonna type my church. So I'm gonna go Warsaw SDA, SDA church, right? So there you go. So look what happens. So the first three searches here are my church. You can see the picture. It tells you the address. I would like you all to do a quick search and tell me if your first three are the same as mine. Let's give a thumbs up. Just with a thumbs up, because we're running out of time. So <laughs> uh, I'm going to start here. Word again? Just type Walsall space SDA church. Would you like to see what my page looks like? And then tell me if you've got the exact same search. For the your house? Can you share screen your... Um... Yes, I'm going, to share, I'm going to share it now. Um, I just close the page. Uh, I think, did I close it? I think that was an error. Okay, I'll just do it again. Uh, we'll so, there you go. And yeah, so my first three searches are Walsall we'll Seventh Day Adventist Church and the our Facebook page and our the website. So those are the first three. Does everyone have the exact same search? Yeah. Thanks. Okay, I'm getting some yes, yes. I've got three yeses so far. All right, and some thumbs up as well. So did anyone not get um did anyone not get the same search? Okay, I've got one so far. Okay, uh, so that's a private message. I got two. Also. I didn't understand actually the the church wall. 
Right. So I've got quite a, okay. So I've somewhere also private message. I've got quite a few people that have said no. So the ones that have said no, uh, could I ask Dr. Romeo Nguyen, what did you get? So, okay. I'll type, I'll type for you so you can see what it is. Yeah. Can you share screen your, uh, com your computer again so we can have. Yeah, I will. I will. Uh, sorry, because of time. Uh, Excuse me. Yes. Um, were the first three um, searches I was supposed to come up, um, SDA Church, the web, the website for it, and the Facebook group, and yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll share screen again. Sorry, so you can have a look. Uh. uh Okay, I don't know. Is it, can everyone see my screen? No, we can't. No. <laughs> uh, so, uh, sorry, it's it's saying that uh, someone else is sharing multiple. So, say yes. Right. Um, okay. Even if you can't, if your first one should say uh, Facebook should be the Facebook page. The first two should be the Facebook pages. So does it say uh, anything about Facebook? So if it's Facebook, uh, then just give me a yes. Yeah, we got the Facebook page. Thank you. So how many people did not get that? Yeah, say yes. Say that. Okay. Okay. Uh, no. Yeah. Just no. These are private messages. Okay. Um, just so you understand, because I, I did get quite a few that didn't. I you need to understand that is a sign that you your browser browser is not safe. It has been hijacked. Um, basically, why I'm, I'm uh, well, I need to reiterate that is because most of the time you don't even realize that your the our browser's hijacked is it goes through a third party. So when you search do a search, it goes through a, someone else who then redirect your page somewhere else as well so you have to be very careful to find out that's what's called adway adway is when there is a website there is a program that's manipulating the information you see to suit their agenda have you ever noticed if you search flights all of a sudden everything single time you're getting pop-ups about flight times and about your country has everybody noticed that anybody noticed yeah you do one you do one search okay. about money and then you wonder how is it that they know about money or a loan and next thing you're getting emails about loans how do they know your email so that's what's misdirection so you need to be careful with regards to the information you share because it's very important you understand that there are third parties involved i had a case uh so to speak where i was trying to assist someone and their service provider i think from talk talk was actually filtering the content that they receive in other words, they were monitoring the content that they have so that they can only access what is appropriate, what they want them to see. So they had to phone talk talk to say, listen, um, you've been monitoring my you've been monitoring my Zoom. I, I can't access Team Viewer simply because they had put parameters for their protection, which they said, look, we think it's not safe for you to, to go to these areas. So that's basically some of the things that you may not be aware but is happening right now. Uh, for time's sake, I don't know if we've got time for questions because I know there are quite a lot of questions that people have. Uh, what questions, how can I answer your questions? Somebody is asking on talk, they're on talk talk. They're saying, do they need to do that? So would that be if they try and maybe if they try and type in certain things, if they get the talk talk sign up, then they would have to ask them? Yeah. Yes. Uh, one of the things uh, like I, we discovered, if you type team viewer or type anydesk.com, those are like um, help websites. If you can access that and it's uh, blocking you, contact your service provider and find out why you can't. Because like I've said, uh, that already means that they've got parameters in place to slow you down. Why this is important, people, is because a lot of the time, we don't have time to check. When we are paying for our broadband, you know, some of us, we, 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 we spend a hard end money on money on broadband. You get the notice that you're supposed to get up to 100 meg broadband. 
How many of you have actually ever checked to see how much you, you're getting? I can tell you several years ago, our church had been on a contract for about nine years and we're supposed to be getting a service of, uh, at the time when I got there, it was 75. Do you know what we're actually getting? We're actually getting three megabytes of broadband data. And we've been getting that for years. So if you don't check what you're getting or what's safe, I'll be honest, you, you're gonna be lost. You're, you're gonna be very lost, especially with regards to who provides your service. Do something called speedtest.net, check what internet you're having, what speed, have they put any blockages or parameters to make you safe or insecure? Please check that because for me, I don't like people that monitor my, 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 my information, like my, my data. Uh, there's a time I think I typed a vaccine safe, you know, like on a Google search, I couldn't even access it. And you're thinking, okay, if they're blocking me from accessing that for my safe, do I really need that type of safety? I think that personally, we need to know what information they they keep and for how long and for what purpose. So all of these things, like I've said, parents, be vigilant with regards to that. Know what you're paying for. Is it what you're paying for? And also, is the content on your computer, the stuff you put on there, or did someone else install that software? Do you have software you're not very familiar with? Check, is your computer getting very hot all of a sudden or acting strangely? Those are signs that you can check for yourself to ensure that uh, your computer runs smoothly. If there are any questions, please uh, feel free to ask, like I've said, because mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm aware of time. Uh, Brother uh, Charles, um, there was a word that you mentioned um, and you said there was something you could type in to check the speed. What was that again? Uh, right. It's, it, it's called speednet.net. I'll type it. It's just a website to check your speed. Uh, speed, sp sorry, speedtest.net. If you type that, it will take you to a, a search engine where you can t check your internet speed. Mm -hmm. If you're, if you're paying for a hundred meg broadband for 50 meg broadband for 30 meg broadband and you're getting one you need to start asking yourself questions are you getting what you're paying for that's the question absolutely this has been so informative i think there's one more question brother charles and then we, yes. we will finish for today okay. um i think there's definitely uh, a great interest um in appreciating all that has been done there's just one more question that was mentioned earlier on, but I don't know again if this has been addressed. It says, uh, what would happen if I shared my location with a stranger? I think that's a bit off. <laughs> what would happen if I shared my location with a stranger? That was in the chat earlier. Right. First and foremost, because it's not very easy to, to do that. How did you share your, share lo your location? I need, that's the first question I'll ask you. Did you give them your IP address? How, how do you know <laughs> what information you shared? That's the question. Could yeah. they answer? Are they willing to answer that question? How do they know what information they shared? I don't know, um, Aduko. I don't know if they're willing to to ask. Was it the location or the IP number? Is it called the IP? Yeah, because your IP address is sort of like your physical address where you are. So it's usually numbers like one nine two dot one six eight dot zero dot one. It's it's that's how you can uh, ping where someone is pinging. It's sort of like uh, where it bounces back and forth to see exactly where you are. So that's why I'm trying to ask how, how do they know they shared uh, that information unless they gave the IP address. That's right. Okay, I'm not seeing them um, in the chat. Uh, maybe you could just mention it was only- Just one second. Okay. Okay, I think it was just, please, please let me, yeah. Okay, I think it was just a case of, maybe you're saying if you share your physical address and you say, I live at this address, that wouldn't be wise with a stranger, I'm assuming anyway, um, but you're saying if it's only if you share the actual IP number, they know where you are. But I think maybe with all the things we've spoken about, it just wouldn't be advisable to share any personal information with a stranger, I would have thought. All right, so, um, okay, I hope I've answered that because I can't really answer it unless I know um, how, they, how they did that, if that makes any sense. And usually you've got a firewall on your router. Oh gosh, like I've said, for one session, it would be impossible for me to try and go through this because 
we need to go into detail for me to show you how can you check your safe you also we also have to talk about the router but the router that's like a different uh uh that's a whole different area but it for me i think the person's question what they're asking i would say they're safe simply because their router should have a firewall to protect their computer so I, i'm not sure how else unless i get more information Okay, well, if that person, if you're able to type that in the chat, if you want some more information on that. Um, someone says, I have a Samsung Core Prime. It uses no SIM card. Is it safe? No. Okay, that was short. And see this. <laughs> yes. Uh, again, wherever this person is, I will need to get into detail. And by the, if I start speaking techie, I'm sorry, you're going to start thinking, you know, um, I know I'm wearing glasses, but um, basically, wherever you use a device which does not have a physical address, it will ping either to the router it's using. So it depends on what they use it for. So it's it's I can't answer that it, whether it's it's unsafe or safe simply because of the fact that it depends what is using it, what they're using it for. So um, please provide more information, then I can try and see if I can answer that, Mary. Okay, I think we have spoken about maybe having a follow up. That's something that if you can um, uh, bear that in mind. Somebody said just this really does have to be the last one um, for today. Can you briefly talk about cookies? Just briefly, that's a question. Right. Now, again, this is where we're talking about adware. Cookies are, is just like uh, imagine you got a jar, right? <laughs> So like where all your favorite bits, you put them in there, we're talking those are the cookies, right? So that's where you're keeping them. As long as you're keeping them safe, where no one else can reach them, then they're safe. But if your browser has been hijacked, like I said, you've got adware, then anybody's got access to that. So cookies can have your, you know, like nowadays for, for, for safety, all our passwords are saved on our browser. So when we get onto a computer, we don't have to type it down. We can just say, say enter and it's already saved. It automatically appears. It's saved under that same criteria, if that makes any sense. So I would say if you are pretty comfortable, your computer is safe, then please uh, feel so. I know a lot of people are buying antiviruses. We will need to come back and sit because some of you are wasting your good money. I'll, I'll tell you, you now. some people are paying 14 pounds a month at the end of the year. Maybe that's hundred and uh, odd pounds. You can save that money because simply using the inbuilt one on the current OS is the same thing as the antivirus. The only difference, like I've said, is what are you using the computer for? Because most of the time I'm noticing people are buying that when... How, how do viruses work? The, what I'm trying to tell you now, the most important part I want you to take from this. If you or your child, for example, are downloading games, it doesn't matter if you've got an antivirus and you're paying 50 pounds a month or you've bought a, a lifetime key, it won't help because it's the same as this. A virus is supposed to, it's like a, 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 a mask. It's supposed to prevent it from, from you getting it onto your face from the world, right? But when a child goes and clicks download, accept on the computer, it's like you're getting the virus in a needle and you're injecting it into your bloodstream. So it doesn't matter what protection you have on the outside because you are actually actively inputting the, the, the software itself directly onto your PC. So it won't help. So this is where we need to be careful in terms of what we are purchasing for what protection, if, if, if that makes any sense. The only thing I can tell you is that the, only, the best method for safety is to make sure we know what our children are using our computers for and to be able to put the parameters that if they're 12 years old, they can only access content for 12 year olds. This is the, the, the part, or if they're 11 or if they're 15 and we put the right uh, time time frame for them to use them. Um, I hope I've answered that question. I think so, I think so. Thank you so much for the child. That's been so, informative and I think that as you said there's so much more to cover isn't there so we have had an amazing time really blessed you've been so thorough so yes. I really want to thank you um, on behalf of the um, the SDA Home Education Association for this monthly forum we will have to have you back brother Charles will that be okay you are welcome <laughs> uh, so with better lighting like I've said I have to apologize 
my daughter was in the house today, so I had to run away and it's getting dark, but mm -hmm. I will definitely do that. And by all means, because I've got a lot of private questions. Uh, uh, Sister Mary, if you like, you can send me a WhatsApp message and I will, because I've got a lot of private messages, I'll be able to answer that. Or by all means, Sister Angela, you can share my number because I've got a lot of people that are wondering if their computer is getting very hot, what do I do? Um, all of those, they can always get, get in touch with me and I'll be happy to answer okay. them. Are you okay if we put it in the chat, Brother Charles? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. All right then, thank you so much. You've had good questions. Sorry, Sister Mary, you said yeah. about the last one, but I didn't know what that was. So yes, we will put Brother Charles's number in the chat and thank you all for your questions, really relevant and for what you've shared, Brother Charles, just a wealth of information and we just couldn't get it all done today. So we are looking forward to having you back again. Okay. Well, thank you so much again and God bless you. Okay. okay. I think we're gonna have our closing prayer now uh, with Brother Joseph, who will be closing with prayer. Okay, Brother Charles, thank you again so much. Um, there's, there's a lot to cover in a very short space of time. Uh, we appreciate that, but we, um, we, we thank you for what you've been able to cover. Um, if we Hopefully, like Sister Andrew said, we'll, we'd like to have you back for part two, just to get into some of the nitty gritty mm -hmm. of some of the things. But your, I believe your contact details have been put in the chat now so people can get in touch directly. Okay. It is a very important topic um, you know, in order to keep our children and ourselves safe as well. Um, if you haven't had the chance just to give us some feedback on this presentation and just for future stuff, there is um, a poll that is still running. You can just answer that for us very quickly. Uh, so we're just going to say a word of prayer to close um, this evening's forum. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much um, for Charles, um, for Trevor, for the information that they've shared with us this evening. Uh, most of us who are doing homeschooling have access to computers to be able to um, research, to find information, to uh, even join classes online and various other things. Lord. And these things themselves are not bad, but like Brother Charles has um, said, is how we use them and how we, um, how diligent we are in terms of setting up the controls. So Lord, I pray that even as you prom prompted us, even though we didn't get all the details that we need, there is still something that we can go away with this evening and um, we can check uh, how to add, remove programs, uh, check what is on our systems. And, um, and Lord, we pray that uh, you make up, uh, you make an opportunity for us to be able to meet again, um, to be able to delve a little bit more detail of how we can protect ourselves. Thank you for Brother Charles and Thank you for all who have joined this evening. We pray that we may take something away with us. Uh, be with us as we continue to, as we seek to bring our children uh, up um, for um, in, in the ways that you have instructed us, that they will be ready and fit to meet you when you come. Uh, not just them, but us as parents also. Like Brother Charles says that when you ask us about the children, we will be able to say, uh, here they are. These are the gifts that you entrusted into our hands. And so we thank you. May we have a blessed evening as we separate. We thank you so much and we ask these in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. My brother was watching from Nigeria. God bless you, brothers. And yeah, bless you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you.